good morning. Good morning. Look at all these smiling faces. Look at this. You know, you start talking about abundance and an abundance of people show up, right? <laughs> well, this, uh, this month's topic is prosperity, abundance, and wealth. And we're not just talking about money, are we? We're talking about the prosperity of love and harmony in the universe. But I want to start by saying yesterday we had an Imagine This Dream event here and a few people showed up and it was off the charts. Yeah. It was so cool. We had some people showing up and, and giving of their souls, right? Sharing of their dreams, imagining something new. This is how we get from where we are to where we want to be as we think it. You know, you don't, you know, you don't build a house without a blueprint. You know, you can. <laughs> you know, you can back up your truck to Home Depot and go, just give me what you got. <laughs> and you'll probably get the leftovers, you know, the two by fours that are kind of wiggly, that no, everybody else put to the side. But I want to start with something that we are experiencing new in this center. This center has a brand new vision mission statement. And it's on the front of your program. And it says this. We are an open, loving, spiritual community dedicated to evolving consciousness through teaching spiritual principles. Woo! Woo! It's, it is. Go ahead. Give yourselves a moment. You know, they say without a, without a vision, you know, the people perish. That's because without foresight of where we're choosing to go, we just kind of meander. Now, meandering is cool. <laughs> All that meander are not lost. But sometimes it's good to know that we do have a specific place that we're going. So my title today is Substance and Supply. We live in an abundant universe with an infinite resupply. It can resupply itself constantly. That's why we have seasons. We don't just have one spring or one fall. We get that out there every year in rake leaves, don't we? Don't we? We have a great tree out here that gives us the most beautiful shade and the most beautiful leaves. <laughs> Ask our gardeners. They're out there every week picking them up or mowing them up. Or, Oh boy, we fill up the cans here, the trash cans full of debris. We recycle that. Whatever you plant in mind, you eventually manifest in the outside world. Hmm. It's a little scary, right? Are, are you ready to experience the result of what you're thinking? <laughs> There's some things I go, oh, let me rethink that, right? But is the power of thought that allows us to cultivate. And I use the seed idea that we all are planting seeds of thought and they grow and they mature into trees that either, if we cultivate them correctly, can bring fruit or they can wither and die. What are you planting in your mind? Now don't answer that. <laughs> Eric Butterworth says in the preface to his book, Spiritual Economics, there is a great need to establish ourselves in the omnipresence of universal substance. Do you see yourself as planted in universal substance? Because we all are. You are part of source energy with all the power of source to create galaxies. You have the power to create galaxies now within your own realm, right? And it says here, you choose some limitation as part of this game, but your power remains unlimited. So there are, you know, I always wanted to float, right? I wanted that power, you know? It'd be great changing light bulbs. Hey, let me get that for you. 
we have some limitation. And there's good reason that we have limitation. If we could know everything there is to know, our face might melt. Right? Because because there's a certain um, suspension of belief. You know, we, we, we suspend our disbelief. And we have to do that. But when we go into a movie theater to watch a movie, we suspend that disbelief and whatever is shown upon that screen we buy into. Enough that we will cry or laugh or have fear if it's a scary movie. Don't we? What, what gives that, that screen that power? Interesting to think about. So... The source of all creation is pure consciousness, pure potentiality, seeking expression from an unmanifest into a manifest universe. It's looking for good conduits through which to flow. So if we say, oh no, I couldn't possibly have any more good, the universe says, absolutely. You see, the universe always says, yes. And if we say no, the universe says, yes, no. I won't give you that if you choose not to have it. And sometimes we don't even know that we're saying it. I remember when I first got into this teaching, I was looking for a soulmate. But I had a bumper sticker on my car that said, happiness is being single. <laughs> Well, think about it. I had been burned a couple times in relationships, you know. They burned, they did that to me. And I didn't want to be burned again. But I wanted my soulmate. <laughs> right now, I'm saying one thing, but my bumper sticker is telling the universe something else. Right? And my practitioner lovingly said, you might want to either stop saying that or remove the bumper sticker. <laughs> I was like, why? She explained, well, you know, you can only encounter one energetic. Either you are looking for a soulmate or you're pushing one away. And my bumper sticker was saying so much louder, you know, what you are speaks so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. So once I removed the bumper sticker, I could move on with a whole new way of thinking. But in our life, where are we saying, I want more abundance, I want to be prosperous, but I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy of it. I'm just, and I'm not saying call anybody out. I'm saying it because we've all done that. We've all had that experience where we were saying one thing with our mouth and living something else with our being. It just needs to be in alignment so that we are conduits through which that energy can flow. When we realize that our true self is one of pure potentiality, we align with the power that manifests everything in the universe. And once we do that, doors open. The windows of heaven will open to bless you in such a way that you will not be able to handle the abundance that is on its way to you. But before it gets to us, we say, oh no, I couldn't possibly. Who am I? Who am I? When we are aware of our experience, something in your life you are creating and pay attention to it, you become it. You know, and I'll get back to one of my relationship things. Um, <clears throat> went to relationship seminar. And I was, you know, that was one of my big things was relationship. Because when I... I always had to have a relationship so I wouldn't have to look at myself. I could always blame them. Well, I'd be okay if it wasn't for fill in the blank. You know, I always had, I was a serial relationship person. You know, I, I always had several going at the same time, just in case, you know. And then I found myself on my knees at two o'clock in the morning alone in my one bedroom apartment, afraid of the world because it was just me. I hadn't made the connection to spirit. And I've told this story before. I called my practitioner, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning. 
I said, oh, poor me. And she goes, who is this? <laughs> I said, it's Steve from church. She goes, no. Who is this? I said, it's Steve from church. And then she goes, who is this really? And I said, oh, I followed my teaching. I said, I'm God. She goes, now we can talk. Now we can talk about what's really going on here. And there was a, you know, that was a healing. That was a short conversation. <laughs> but one, one, one. One, one, one. We're always one. You know, when we pour ourselves into a relationship and we lose ourselves, when we're faced with just ourselves, what do we have left if we don't have our connection to spirit? It's so important. You are creators. You bring about what you think about. There is so much power in this room. If we were to fill this room with love, saturate the walls with love. Whoa. Can you feel it? Can you feel I mean, we are love generators. We can't help but love. And when we take the power that created us and turn it into what we choose to be, do, and have, there is nothing we cannot do. You know what the most powerful source in the universe is? God, as you, with an idea. You ever been around somebody who has an idea that they want to do something? <laughs> And they've locked in. Uh, get out of the way or you get bulldozed over, right? It's like there's nothing more powerful than a mind that's made up its mind to do something. Because it will happen. It will happen. Come heaven or high water. <laughs> Change that one quick, huh? <laughs> Got to think on your feet with this stuff, right? If you are experiencing something in your life that you want to change, then choose differently. By pointing at what we don't want, we hold it in place. Look at how they're treating me. Look at what... Da, 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 da. We're giving energy to what we don't want. And we don't even know that we're holding it in place. But it always happens to me, don't you know? I don't know. Look. Now, again, I'm not saying this to, to call myself out, but I'm calling myself out. Because a lot of times I'll do that. I, I'll, you'll, I'll say stuff that I don't even, where did that come from? And then I have to investigate where it did come from. Trace it back. And it was some well-meaning person that told me something that wasn't the truth. Don't love too much, you'll get hurt. What? I'm going to love with every fiber of my being. And if I get hurt, I get hurt. It's because I expected somebody to be, do, or have something that I couldn't do on my own. You know, you expect these people to come into your life to do for you what you can't do for yourself. In this relationship, seminar she said okay write on your paper everything you want your mate to be you know you know you got the list and she goes okay now become those things I was like oh well maybe I don't have to have this one <laughs> maybe maybe um, maybe I'm this was probably a maybe you know I can cross that off you know you start you start arguing for your limitations you ever do that argue for your limitations and we do it, and we don't even know we're doing it. It's like, don't take my bad away from me. It's my, that's my challenge. You know, if I was to stand before each one of you and say, give me your challenge. And in giving it, you give up all memory of ever having it. You would never have it again. It would never be, it wouldn't even come up for, for something you have to heal because it wouldn't be part of your experience. Part of you may be going, don't take that away from me. <laughs> what would I talk about? <laughs> don't take my pain away from me. If I can't have what I want, I can have the pain of not having it. Ooh. Substitutionary fulfillment. That's a whole other talk. <laughs> but think about it. Just think about it sometimes when we're arguing, arguing for what we don't want. And it happens. Just call yourself on it. Go, you know what? I need to look at this differently. By pointing at what we don't want, we hold it in place. So what do we have to do? 
turn away from what's not working. Not to deny it. Don't go, oh, it's not there. Go, it's there. But what do I want? What do I want to experience? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it... What does it feel like to be in my life right now? Wouldn't, wouldn't you see differently? Because if energy flows where our attention goes, and our attention is on what's not working, the law is always creating what's not working for us. That's how the law works. So when we move our attention from what's not working to what is, that grows. And we grow that so big that we become part of it, part of the picture. You know, make yourself a vision board. <coughs> Surround yourself with all the things you choose to be, do, and have. And then put yourself in the middle of the picture. Don't forget to put your own picture into the vision board. <laughs> Other you're, if, if you're not, you're always looking at it out there. Oh, it'll always be there, you know. This is why we affirm right now. We don't affirm something to happen tomorrow. Because tomorrow comes and we affirm it tomorrow, and then tomorrow comes and we affirm it keeps moving the carrot out in front of the pony. Go ahead and give that carrot to the pony. It's okay. We have more carrots. <laughs> so, again, to my analogy of planting, whatever you plant in mind, you will eventually manifest in the outside world. Change your thinking. Change your life. There is not a spot where God is not. And so where you're sitting, God is sitting. That's what I mean. It's like planting an apple tree. We had this analogy yesterday. Planting an apple tree. And last week I talked about, you know, an, an apple. How many seeds are in the apple? Five or six? And you take one seed and you say, how many apples are in a seed? Countless. If it's planted correctly. First, you gather rich, fertile soil. And there's gardeners in here, so just, just go with me on this. I, I don't know all the specifics of planting an apple tree, so I'm sure that you, afterwards I'll hear, well, you actually have to do it like this, but <laughs> this is my, my thinking about it. Next, you choose which apple seed to plant. Do you want green or red, right? Do you want, you know, granny or red delicious, right? Right? Whatever. Honey, Chris, whatever. But you choose what kind of apple seed to plant. Then you give it ample amounts of water and light. You have to feed it with the soil and with it needs to drink and it needs to have air and it needs to have light. Sunlight is the photosynthesis that allows that magic to work on the seed or the seed to work on the soil or whatever happens. And eventually you have a mighty apple tree, don't you? Your mind is the rich soil. Your thoughts are the seeds. Your action is the water, and your feelings and attention is the light of the sun. That's how you grow what you choose to be, do, and have in your life. You think about it. Now, I used to think about it by worrying. Oh, I keep myself up at night worrying. You know, if worrying could get anything done, this world would be a different place, wouldn't it? And worrying is just negative prayer, really. You're just thinking about how awful it is, and you're staying in that moment. You are recreating what you don't want. And again, I'm, not, I'm just calling myself out, because this is what I used to do. And I find myself doing that still. You know, my mind, I don't know about you, but my mind sometimes defaults to negative. I'm not sure why that happens, but I know that it does. So I surround myself with positive music, positive people, positive readings. I became a minister, so I would think positively. You know, hey, you, you want to you demonstrate this stuff? Become a minister. I tell you, it's, it's not for everybody. But... <laughs> But if it is your calling, 
don't run. <laughs> it will chase you. <laughs> it will chase you. I, I tell you, if you told me 25 years ago I was going to be a minister, I thought you were nut. So most people don't get what they want because they're trained to think what they don't want. The things you want in your life can't come in because the things you don't want are taking their place. Mm. But I don't want to give them up. I don't want to give them up. They're comfortable. I'm comfortable holding on to this rock in the middle of the stream. It's my rock. It has my handprints and teeth marks in it. <laughs> but there's a beach right there. But I'm afraid that I'll get swept away with the current. There comes a point when the pain of hanging on is more than the pain of letting go. We've all been there, haven't we? Yeah. We wouldn't be in this room if we hadn't experienced that. At some point, you decided to change your mind about something. And thank God you found your way here. I mean, you're around people that think like this. This is incredible. I mean, we can change the world. And it's changing. It may not always look that way, I know. But there is something else going on. There is a love that is expanding. If not, we would have blown ourselves off this little plane of existence a long time ago. But something is growing in love. The game of life is the game of boomerangs. Our thoughts, deeds, and words return to us sooner or later with astounding accuracy. And that's from Florence Scovel Shin. So if things come back to us, what are we throwing out there? What are, we, what are we boomeranging? That's why we need to boomerang love. Because if it's going to come back, let's send out things we want, right? There's nothing you cannot be, do, or have. Nothing you cannot change. Do you believe that? And so it is. It will be. You know, when we say, and so it is, we can kind of roll our tongue. But when we say that, what it means is, and so, what we've just said is now. Think about it that way. And so, it is. And then walk on in your life as if it is so. You don't go, so it is, and then go back to, you know, not being, doing, or having, right? Well, sometimes we do. There is not a spot where God is not. There's not a cell where God is not. Sometimes the cells have forgotten that. We need to reintroduce them to it, don't we? That's how healing happens. It's just a reintroduction to God. It is no use to desire a thing unless you expect to get it, either in part or in full. So what are you thinking? And again, this isn't to, you know, say, what are you thinking? You know, my mom always used to say that. What were you thinking? Well, I really wasn't. I was just kind of having a good time. That's why things happen the way they do for you. No, she's, she's a wonderful spiritual being. I love her very much. But, you know, there's a story of the greyhound chasing the rabbit. You know, their sense of smell is so keen that when they get on the smell or, or a, um, a hound dog or, you know, they have that keen sense of smell that they know exactly where it's been and, where, you know, they're looking for it. It may go up a tree or down a tree or in a hole or out. And have you, if you've ever seen a, a, a tracing dog that has lost the scent of something, you know, and it's sniffing around to regain the scent. It does so pretty quickly if, they, if there's a scent to catch. It, 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 it pretty quickly gets back on the scent and then chases it down. But you know, I'm a little, I'm a little slower than that. <laughs> you know, I, I want to go get the book and see the movie and take a seminar and maybe some therapy. <laughs> 
before I change my mind on something, don't I? And again, this is just the process that it takes to change our mind. You know, it can happen in the twinkling of an eye. It can be that quick. Or it can take some time. And sometimes the time that it takes is the process that healing needs so that we can change our mind. Sometimes the thoughts in our minds are a huge ship, a Titanic, that doesn't turn on a dime. You know, it's a four second turn. And we have to give ourselves that, that sometimes we need to just be in the process of the change. But know that we are changing. We are in the process of changing. So getting back to abundance, I want to introduce you guys to a book that um, I've used for years. I've been through so many of these little books. Um, I use them and the binding falls apart, you know, and the pages start coming out. Um, this is called The Abundance Book by Jan John Randolph Price. It's like, I don't know, seven, seven dollars in the bookstore. I think we have five or six of them. But in here is a thing called the 40-Day Prosperity Plan. And what you do is you read what it says, and then you write it down, and then you journal about it for 40 days. And there's only 10 of the suggestions in here, so you have to repeat them four times. And the trick to this is that you do it for 40 days straight, and if you miss a day, you go back to day one. <laughs> yeah, be careful about 37, 38, you know? It's like, <laughs> oh. But you know what? Once you do this, I kept doing it 40 days at a time for years because it, my life started to open up so much. Because, because my thinking had reverted to negativity so often, I needed a wash, rinse, and repeat. And this isn't about selling books. This is about giving tools that might work for you. And there's some great stuff in here about abundance. So I wanted just to pass that along to you. Desire will put you in touch with the inner world of cause and connection. You will be able to visualize substance, the desire, and then continuously expect it, which is ne necessary in bringing it into reality. We can't afford the luxury of a negative thought. You know, I used to try to squeeze one in, you know. Oh, well, I, could, I could be upset for a little while about this, couldn't I? You know, for me, negativity breeds more negativity. And I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if it is for you. But we need to get ourselves into something positive. We need to, even if it's just thinking differently. You know, people used to say, well, how bad can it get? <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> Don't even go there. And I turned it around to how good can it get? How good, how good can it get? Well, I can think pretty good. You know, I mean, I can think pretty bad, but I like thinking pretty good a lot better. What does it look like your challenge all worked out? Live in the energy of the healing. Live in the energy of abundance. And watch what happens. Watch what happens. So, how can you use this power? Certainly, we could have used it in any way we choose. But how do you want to use it? There is a power in the universe. It is greater than we are. And we are using it, if we know it or not. Ernest Holmes says, you can use it. And I say, we are using it. But how are we using it? Are we using it to recreate our challenges? You know, a recreational vehicle? to recreate our challenges, or is it a recreational vehicle to renew our triumphs? And the choice is yours. So, in conclusion, 
We live in an abundant universe with an infinite supply and a resupply. Whatever you plant in your mind, you will eventually manifest in this world of form. What are you planting in mind? I'd like to read this little piece from Marianne Williamson, A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principle principles of Course in Miracles. And she says, Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Now, you probably know this <laughs> quote. You've heard it. Or maybe not. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, Who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, famous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't, fee won't feel insecure around you. You are meant to shine as children do. You were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And so, it is. Well, it's time to follow our teaching and go within. So I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you or take a soft focus on the beautiful flowers or the candle or the beautiful mural behind me. But let's follow our teaching in that whatever you believe the power is that created you, that's your business. You get to call it whatever you want. But let's bring it to the forefront of our consciousness right now. You know, when we're thinking about what we believe the infinite is to us, we're not thinking about our challenges. That right there is enough to heal. So as we move our consciousness to what we believe, we know that there is a power that breathes our body. It is beating our heart. It is digesting our food. It is causing the sun to shine and the grass to grow. All at the same time. And I know that each one of us is a divine expression and unified as that power in form. There's not God and us. There is only God as us. So I speak my word of prayer today upon anyone, anywhere, in any plane of existence who is asked for prayer, be it verbally or typed or thought about or contemplated or perhaps just in our minds where we said, God, please help me with this. And I know that that activity of the divine in all things is now active. We flip the switch to the on position where God flows effortlessly, bringing exactly the healing, the information, the ideas that are needed in every situation for the forward movement of love. For friends, love is all it is. Love is the heart and root, is the soul and the soil, all combined as one idea. It is all God. So as we move into that energetic of love, letting the divine circuits flow, moving our so-called bloated nothingness out of the way so that those divine circuits may flow easily and effortlessly, bringing the perfect healing in every cell, every situation, every idea. 
we can feel the rising in consciousness, the elevation of love itself into this plane of existence. How good it is to know that we know that we know that we know. How good it is to experience the healing, the revealing of that truth and all that is. As each one of us says yes to love, we say yes to life. So I let go. I completely release this in thanksgiving, in love, in peace, and in harmony directly into that living, loving law of God where I know it is already done. And knowing this, there is a new peace and a new understanding of life itself that rises within our life in an identifiable and recognizable way that we can say yes, absolutely yes to life. And affirming this together, we say, and so it is.